Welcome to Wonderland Weekly, hosted by Toronto Tai. Now sit back and have a wonderful week. Hey everyone, Toronto Tai back here at Canada's Wonderland once again for another wonderful week. I am very excited because the Victoria Day fireworks are happening tonight. So I am uh, gonna be sticking around to check those out. Uh, so I did get here a little bit later in the day. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is uh, it is busy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I am uh, looking forward to checking out uh, a lot of uh, changes this week. Uh, probably not as many as <laughs> have happened in the past, but I think there are still some uh, significant things that are happening. So looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, just overall gonna have a wonderful day here at Canada's Wonderland. Last Friday, I was here at the park and uh, Grand World Eatery was, uh, it seemed like it was getting close, but it definitely was not open yet. Two days later, it opened. Uh, <laughs> so that is excellent. Uh, yeah, looking forward to getting my first meal here in this uh, newly renovated uh, food location. This is uh, excellent. So excited to, uh, to try this out. Here inside of the newly renovated and rebranded Grand World Eatery, uh, yeah, you can see the uh, the menu up here. That definitely a very similar kind of uh, cafeteria style queue, uh, similar to what they had at Lazy Bear Lodge. So that is excellent. I think that, that is going to be a much much higher capacity and just a lot clearer for uh, for guests who are uh, coming to this location. So that is excellent. Uh, in terms of entrees, chicken tenders, jerk pork, beef strips, tofu, ranchero. Uh, honestly, a little disappointed in the selection here. Uh, sides, onion dusted pierogi, uh, Moroccan vegetable rice, sweet glazed carrots, sweet kale salad, and fresh seasonal fruit. A little disappointed in the side options as well. Uh, and then they also have uh, some desserts right there. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. I believe they were supposed to have Piri Piri Chicken, but I'm not seeing it on the menu now. Uh, I don't know if maybe that will come a little bit later, but regardless, uh, very, very good uh, setup here. Uh, and looks like the north side, uh, which has always, <laughs> for the life of Backlot Cafe, was always uh, for private events. Looks like it's not quite ready yet. I don't know if it'll be exclusively for private events like before, but with this setup, I feel like that is not the case. Hopefully it's not the case um, because yeah, added capacity is always nice and just having more seating indoors will be uh, very, very, very good. For my very first meal here at Grand World Eatery, I got the Mongolian beef strips and the onion dusted pierogies. Very, very tasty. And of course, every meal here does come with the, uh, the non bread. Uh, so that is excellent. Uh, everything very, very tasty. The, the beef is very tender and very flavorful. So that is awesome. Pierogies are exactly what I want from pierogies. Uh, yeah, just overall, a fantastic meal here. I am a huge, huge fan. Please bear with me as I show off the Lazy Bear Lodge uh, <laughs> poster in here in Grand World Eatery and all the other posters. I'm gonna try my best to see all of them. Uh, all of them have amazing captions. So please, <laughs> yeah, please head in here and uh, read all the captions because they are wonderful and just absolutely love that the park has added all of these in Grand World Eatery. Ginza Gardens, of course, the original name for Grand World Eatery. Absolutely love, love, love this poster. And right here we've got Bayer Curve. Oh, one of my absolute favorite rides uh, ever, but especially favorite rides that was uh, removed. It was, uh, oh, love this, love this little tribute to it. We've got one for International Street. We've got one for the former Egyptian Pavilion. Uh, with Pharaoh's Eye being the ride there. Uh, fantastic there. We've got Crystal Palace Arcade, a little bit of representation there uh, for Expo, which is great. Windseeker, wonderful. Uh, absolutely love this style of poster. Uh, and uh, Bedrock Dock Tank Boats, which, uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting how many of these are not using the ride's original name. A little bit of medieval fair representation as well with medieval swinging ship, which is of course uh, Vikings Rage. Excellent, really, really love the inclusion of all of these posters here. There are now pop machines. That is fantastic. 
Thank you so much, Wonderland. Uh, I don't know why Backlot Cafe never had them, at least not on the uh, south side of the location here. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is fantastic. And really, it just feels overall just much more spacious all throughout this location with, uh, with this huge upgrade. Even the detail in the ceiling, these tiles look fantastic. They look very, very appropriate for something called Grand World Eatery. Taking a look at the north side of Grand World Eatery. Uh, yeah, inside this, uh, <laughs> looking through the windows here, uh, there is no furniture in there. Obviously, I, I, I mean, that should be able to be added pretty quickly, uh, but also the patio here is blocked off. Uh, with one of these nice uh, scrimmed construction fences. Uh, so I guess not quite ready yet, uh, but hopefully it will be ready very, very soon because I really love this patio on the north side. Over here in Action Zone, just getting a look at uh, Behemoth because it is fantastic. It's a great coaster, but no, really, I am uh, <laughs> paying attention to Moosehorn Falls. Uh, got a good Later. look at it uh, on my way in today. And uh, yeah, it looks like they have the top of the platform in place now, as well as parts of the stairwell. So that is excellent progress from last week. And uh, yeah, hopefully it, uh, I mean, it is expected to open sometime in June. Hopefully it meets that, uh, <laughs> that expectation. And uh, yeah, but really looking forward to that slide. Not much of uh, an update though from, <laughs> from the park, uh, but I did see one, at least one piece of the slide, the actual slide uh, on site there. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll start to see some color uh, over in that area. Over here at Wonder Mountain's Guardian, the locker structure is still in place and, well, it's now home to some vending machines. I guess that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> not thrilled about it, but uh, at least it's not the lockers anymore. That is uh, wonderful. <laughs> Over here by Thunder Run, where the uh, the hole in Wonder Mountain is. Uh, yes, they still have these fences up, but now they also have this fun sign that we are preparing for your future enjoyment. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is uh, good to see. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, I don't know why they felt the need to add that sign, but regardless, uh, future enjoyment, yay! Minor update on the former site of the multi-faith space. Uh, looks like there are some new orange markings uh, around here, so that is curious. Uh, still not sure exactly what's happening. I, I am starting to have my doubts about my, uh, uh, my French drain system, but we shall have to wait and see. One more update here around the fly, or at least the path from Grab and Go Market to the fly. Uh, and yeah, that is that there is a marking here. It says BRK equals 3A. Uh, and then there is also a marking behind this fence here where this sinkhole is. And I believe it says BRK equals 3. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, not not sure what that, uh, that means exactly, but uh, it's certainly curious. Get, get in my, uh, my theory brain going, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. A few updates here at the uh, new Tiny Tom Donuts location. It is open, that is excellent to see. Uh, I don't think people are quite figuring out how the queue is supposed to work yet, uh, which is a little unfortunate, but uh, hopefully this will uh, allow them to serve a lot more people a lot faster, so that is excellent. But also, right here, in front of this uh, game's stall, then there is uh, this marking here. Uh, it does say, I think, BRK equals two. I know it's upside down, I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is uh, a little curious. Don't know if that could potentially refer to a break run, uh, but regardless. The other update is that this set of games here, all these arcade games under the former Top Glow uh, structure, they are all open now, so that is excellent. Come here and get your, uh, yeah, your little prizes, different sizes here. As I keep wandering around Alpenfest, I keep seeing more markings, uh, so I'm not sure exactly what to make of them, but uh, this one right here next to the uh, uh, three-point challenge here, it says BRK equals one. So if this is one, then there's two in front of that building and three and three A on the other side of this building, uh, and I believe it says four, 
uh, behind the fence there. Seems like it's a pretty straight line heading over there. Uh, fairly straight line, not exactly, but uh, uh, could this be a brake run? I don't know, but there's also this right back here. This orange marking. Yep, yep. I don't know if that means that uh, possibly some of these trees will have to be removed. I don't know what's happening, but uh, I feel like I'm getting a, a better picture of things here in Alpenfest, and that uh, kind of concerns me, but uh, we'll see. Over here by Wild Beast, it is time for another edition of Tree Talk with Toronto Thai. And unfortunately, it is another sad edition as that tree right here has been removed. Uh, the park actually did a fantastic job of uh, covering their tracks, uh, but I know the trees too well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, these stumps uh, were actually removed from not just that tree, but also, uh, I believe, a couple right around here. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a little bit more open. So that is uh, always sad to lose trees, but uh, uh, honestly, in this case, it doesn't, it's not that noticeable. So fine, uh, <laughs> I just hope. Uh, and yeah, I, I really just hope that the park plants some replacement trees uh, around this area very, very soon. Around Arthur's Bay, there are a few updates. Uh, chief among them is that Vikings Rage is now open for the season with its new electric system instead of the hydraulic one that it had previously. So that is uh, very, very good. It looks uh, looks like people are uh, <laughs> having a great time. Sounds like you're having a great time. Uh, so that is excellent. I unfortunately will not be getting on it today. Uh, the line is just a bit too long. It is a full queue and it is getting close to the time for fireworks. So uh, yeah, I don't think I'll make it on it this week. But other, <laughs> other things are happening around Arthur's Bay, including the uh, new dive structure. Well, it looks like there are footings or, or piles, or whatever you call them, for the new structure. I count six around here in more of a circular shape. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the new structure is going to look like, but uh, progress is happening there. Uh, so both of those are very, very exciting. And also the uh, Prestige Pass VIP Lounge here at the backside of Allswell Hall. Wow, the park really did a fantastic job of blending the new construction in with the existing building. That looks wonderful with all the detailing there. Uh, also, it looks like they have a little bit of an enclosed area on the uh, back patio, uh, which makes me hopeful that maybe maybe regular guests can enjoy part of the patio back here. Uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, yeah, the VIP lounge does not appear to be open quite yet, but lots of progress. It's looking very, very nice. Uh, from the outside, uh, and unfortunately, eh, I don't think I'll be experiencing the inside at all. But uh, yeah, yeah, there is your little update from Arthur's Bay. Lots of stuff happening around here in Medieval Fair. Another quick update on the outside of All's Well Hall, and that is that the Griffin's Crown VIP Lounge, this sign has shown up in the well. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's uh, kind of a cool idea to put it in here and it is still coming soon looks like you will enter uh from the side back there so that is uh yeah there's your little update for anyone with a prestige pass and hopefully i'm hoping that the park still plants a bunch of flowers around this uh this sign in the well i really didn't expect to have anything else to give an update on outside of allswell hall but uh they are using the screen out here to display the hours and that is Fantastic. Love, love, love this. Also, just love the fact that Allswell Hall is open to regular guests and not just for catering events. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Wonderland, for, uh, <laughs> for these little additions here, these little changes that do mean a whole lot. Taking a look at the new menu in Allswell Hall for this year, and that includes the Allswell Hall platter with two vegetable spring rolls, three jalapeno poppers, and five calamari. Uh, and we also have uh, a couple of desserts over here. We've got uh, country barbecue sausage and Asian slaw, as well as chicken tenders, plus tossed chicken tenders. Uh, and there is also stromboli in a few different varieties. We've got a pulled pork sandwich uh, with fries and a beef, sa uh, beef brisket sandwich with 
onion rings. I'm definitely going for that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, very, very cool that the park is actually opening this location for regular guests this year. And uh, yeah, I'm just very excited for that one meal in particular. Yep, I went and got the uh, brisket sandwich. It is very, very good on the ciabatta bun uh, with the onion rings and uh, yeah, so some kind of uh, uh, sauce here. I'm not sure if it's horseradish or spicy mayo, but regardless, it is tasty with the onion rings. Uh, I kind of wish that they had offered to put it on the sandwich as well, but the sandwich is honestly so tasty by itself that uh, it didn't really need anything extra. Very, very good. I am so happy with this meal and probably going to get it a bunch this season. At the back of Allswell Hall, uh, there used to be a set of double doors uh, leading out to the patio, but obviously those are no longer here because, uh, yeah, the VIP lounge is right behind this new wall. Well, we have reached the end of another fireworks night. Fantastic show, uh, as always. Uh, really, really enjoyed it, and I think a lot of people uh, had just a phenomenal day here at the park. Uh, I personally did not get in on any rides, but that's okay, because there's uh, other stuff to do here at Canada's Wonderland. I got to check out Grand World Eatery with all its phenomenal posters. Uh, those are wonderful. Uh, I, I didn't show off quite all of them. There was somebody sitting directly in front of one of them. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show it off in the future. But uh, wow, wow, yeah, no, that is happening. All's Well Hall, I managed to uh, eat in there. Really, really happy that that is open to regular guests this year. And okay, okay, we gotta talk about this for a second. Front Gate Plaza, the crowd flow here is so good at the end of a fireworks night. I have never seen it move this well through the plaza here. So yes, all the improvements that the park made, worth it. Absolutely worth it. This is phenomenal. So quick to, for all the people to get out of the park. Uh, just wonderful. As to, you know, whether or not we're going to get out of the parking lot quickly, that's another question. But <laughs> I'm sure the park is, uh, you know, looking into that as well. They, they continue to try to make improvements to that process. Uh, overall, though, I had a fantastic day. Really, really curious about what's going to happen, you know, around the Alpenfest area. But, uh, yeah, I think that'll about do it for this week. So, until next time, as always, have a good one! If you like this video, you can now buy me a hot chocolate at buymeacoffee.com. I also love hearing your thoughts, so feel free to leave a comment. Thanks so much for your continued support, and be sure to subscribe for more wonderful videos.